Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody this wonderful morning? Well, you know I could have saved us all of sitting here for a whole talk if I just followed that uh, song there, the meditation song. It's that simple. As I surrender, I fall into the arms of love. There it is. That's it. We can go home now. <laughs> It's that simple to read, to get up here intellectually, but to walk the talk and to do it, well, that's a different story. So that's what we're going to spend our time on is how can we get there? Because you see, you can't acquire, get, or create love in your life. It's impossible. Why? Because it's already there. Our job is simply to reveal it. Has anybody ever uh, studied a baby? You, they don't have a problem with that. Okay? They are just in, in an expression. They're in their being. They are in the now moment at all times, and they let you know what's on their mind. <laughs> okay? So if we started there, and we had all of that, and and you know the joy for me is at Christmas time is being able to see all those kids. Uh, in my Christmas Santa experience, it's absolutely incredible, you know. And then it makes me think, what happened? And there is the secret. You see, it's because of the circumstances and conditions that happen to us in our life, we become scarred and hurt and accept things and believe things about ourselves that aren't really the truth about who and what we are. So it's just like an onion that's getting all these layers, gets distorted. And so really, all the love that we need is already there. Our job is simply to begin to reveal that. And that means uh, to get rid of some of the distortions. I remember I'm not much of a, a, an art person, like I admire the people playing up here with the music and everything, because if it was me doing it and singing, there'd be a stampede to the door. It's not one of my strengths. And I never really did think that I had something inside of me. I never thought that there would be something that would be able to appreciate art and to even feel love around it. And, uh, you know, I remember a couple of experiences, very valuable I learned from it. I, I had a judgment about that and about art. You know, I've seen all these pictures. Well, what's the big deal? And I remember walking in Buckingham Palace one day, looking at that, and then I saw Rembrandt. <laughs> I didn't know what to say or what to think. I just stood there. I was impressed. It touched something inside of me that I hadn't felt before looking into a piece of work that somebody had put on canvas. And it was incredible. But it was to be superseded by an experience that created so much learning uh, for me was uh, when I was, and Ann and I were traveling into Italy and we went into Florence and uh, we went to the Academia there. And uh, you know, I, I, I gotta put this into my mind that I gotta get this out of rest all at once because I kept hearing about Michelangelo and uh, his David that he created, you know, and I thought, how could, how could something like that do something to all of those people? Well, all you've got to do is stand there and look at it, <laughs> and you'll understand. But you can't understand until you're in the presence, see? You can't understand love until you're in the presence of it. And that evoked something in me that took me to a place I never thought I'd go. And uh, that wasn't the highlight of my journey with Michelangelo. What was the highlight of my journey was seeing a rock quarry, where he got the marble from. And then seeing a few, un there's four of them I believe, unfinished pieces of work that he did called the Four Prisoners. He never did finish them in his life, but they call them the prisoners because they were partially done and they were done so well, 
so lifelike and realistic. It, you could almost see them trying to step out of the stone <coughs> into full expression. And when I saw that, that, that touched me so deeply and with so much awe and appreciation. And to know that I have that very same capability to create that beauty in my journey that he does, all I have to do is to be really clear about who and what I'm about and what my talents are, because each one of us, God gave our talents, we just sell ourselves short books. We just think any fool could do that. Just like me, uh, I, I get up here and I do all my talking and in class and that. I think anybody could do it. There's no problem for me to do that. But not, not everybody's comfortable doing that. But that's my gift, that's what God gave me. And as long as I'm in the position to chip away everything that isn't about that, then that essence of who I am can be revealed. And that's what really love is. And he had a unique idea, which I really have taken to heart in everything that I do. I try to keep that in mind. He didn't have an idea uh, and went about making a model like most sculptors do. He had a little, uh, he had an idea and a picture in his mind and all he did was he went into the rock quarry and he walked around and he looked for the piece of marble that had that picture inside of it. You could say, well, any old piece would do. No, not any old piece would do, folks. He wanted that one that he knew was inside. And they asked him, how do you create so be such beauty? He says, very simply, I simply chip away everything that isn't what I see inside, you see. And that's what we got to do for ourselves. We've got to quit trying to be something that we aren't because somebody else thinks we should. We got to accept that talent that we have and find a way to express it in a positive and constructive way. And it's there. And as we start doing that and start working on one of the key ingredients, which is self-acceptance instead of self-condemnation, then we move slowly into that over a period of time. So uh, and I've been working at it 38 years, and man, it's just starting to get a lot more clearer now. <laughs> That's the way it is. So, you know, one of the key qualities is to have patience. And I like what uh, Edgar Casey said. He said, we can only possess that which we freely give. So that in order to become love or more godlike, all giving, we must give that which is God, love. And the essential key to this is forgiveness. And again, it's always there, you know. It's forgiveness, and then there's one step before finding love in ourselves, which we did last month, this peace. We got to work at the inner peace, and we got to work at forgiveness. That's a tough one. Both of those are really tough. Because inner peace means dealing with the distortions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis with the world around us. And forgiveness, the two tough ones are, are, are really when we have uh, an individual that's perpetrated a tragedy in our experience, uh, as many of us have had. And, uh, one of the things they talk about in forgiveness is to love somebody. Good point here, you don't have to love them. You don't even have to like them. You just have to become neutral. But where the real key in forgiveness and what makes a step forward is when we work with the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Or I guess the people in the mirror, I guess it should be like two of specific, gender neutral. When I look at the people in the mirror, okay? When we look at the person in the mirror, that's the one that we got to learn to love. Louise Hay had a beautiful affirmation, I love and approve of myself. 
Well, you know what? I put a little addendum on that because it wasn't working with a lot of people I worked with, and there's a reason for it. The little addendum I put on is, I love and approve of myself exactly as I am. And most people so I don't want to love myself the way I am. I want to love myself this way. Well, you're not that way. <laughs> the bottom line is, is you can't start somewhere where you're not. Like a lot of people would like to start a diet by having 10 pounds gone. <laughs> you don't start there. <laughs> you gotta start where you're at. Okay? You gotta try that when you tip in at 425 pounds and see how that goes for size. I love and approve of myself exactly as I am. See, you cannot change into anything else until one accepts themselves unconditionally the way they are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Of course, that's all internal stuff. We're not talking about what other people think because that doesn't ma matter what other people think. Not one bit. Okay? Not one bit! Because they're not in your head thinking unless you invite them and let them occupy space. So you should see all the people in my head. Okay? So it's about accepting ourselves exactly the way we are. And Jesus, you know, in the time of, there he was, you know, he's going to the Last Supper and the trials the next day, and he's doing the supper and washing his disciples' feet at the end of the day and telling them about how one of them's going to betray him and how the other one's going to, his one which is faith, Peter, is going to turn away from him and deny him. His association with him three times before the cock crowed, he's predict predicting all this stuff, of course, which happened. In the heat of all of this, he said something which you would not expect from someone in that position to be, but it was probably the greatest gift that he gave everyone in John 13, chapter 34, <coughs> chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that you, ye shall also love one another. By this all men shall know that ye are, my, ye are my disciples, if you love one to another. So that's the thing that we've got to work on. Okay. Now, the problem that we get into with love is people say, well... Yeah, I love this, and I love that. We use the word a lot. Okay, and what does it really mean? And then people get to me, and they say, Oh, Reverend Doug, I find it a, a whole lot easier to love other people than my, myself. And then I use that word, Oh, my, where can I put it? Well, it's like one of those old, big old bulls in the field. You know that word. <laughs> Okay? Because the truth is, you can't love anybody more than you love yourself. Oh, and then people will argue with people. Let's make us both right. <clears throat> First off, you're right because intellectually you've convinced yourself that you can do that. So it's just that a mental, intellectual conviction. And that's a good start but it's extremely shallow because love has nothing to do with that. It's a feeling. You ever notice that? I've got to tell you, when I stood there and see that statue of David and those four prisoners of Michelangelo, I had something happen into me I could only describe as love. Okay? And I directed it towards that. It's a feeling. It's an essence. It could be invoked through anything. A little dog does it, and you know, our little dog does it, it and it's I like her too when she's <laughs> But you know, I, I take him out, bring him back in, give him a little bit of chicken, put him down, he curls up there, and then he shows me the teeth and growls at me. <laughs> <laughs> I know he loves me, but he just doesn't want to be disturbed because he's in a position, you know. So sometimes we do that with each other, people we love. We growl at them, but that doesn't mean we don't love them. It's just we're in a place where we don't want to be disturbed. <laughs> So, you know, um, 
That idea of being able to love someone comes from the fact of loving yourself. You cannot have a feeling inside of yourself with respect to thinking of somebody else because it's in yourself. You can't have it anywhere else. Oh, I had a feeling over there. It was nice. I loved them a lot more over there. Well, you can't do that. That's ridiculous, right? It's in here. So, therefore, if we want to love life more, we want to love our family more, our experiences more, it boils down to one thing. we got to love this more. And that's where, why people never get started on deepening it, because they don't want to deal with loving themselves. I can't love myself. Okay. Well, I had this new revelation about this year, uh, about well, three weeks ago, uh, shortly after I put in the title. And I always say, yeah, well, if you can't love yourself, you've got to start by liking yourself. And uh, then I had people say, well, I don't even like myself. <laughs> but there is a place you can start before that. And this will really, really help learning to like and love self and learning to like and love life a lot more out here. It's called respect. That's a start that we can all make. We can start at respecting ourselves. And then, as we respect ourselves, we'll take it out into the world around us. So a couple of quick little tools that, that we can use um, is giving. When we're giving, give completely with no strings attached and no attachments to outcome. Say, well, I'm a good giver, but when somebody gives it away, they say, oh, how could they do that? That was for them. Well, that's because you had an attachment to giving, so you weren't really giving. You have an attachment to the outcome. Giving is when the gift leaves a hand. It's done. Being of service, giving of your time, talent, and treasure. Having faith and trust, and that means demonstrating it. Standing up and speaking for what you firmly believe in. Oh, that's easy for you to say. You don't know what could happen to me when I do that. Does anybody think that? I said, that's right. I don't know what can happen to you, but I certainly know what can happen to you if you don't do it. Well, it could be out. There could be circumstances and situations. Right. But better to stand up and say what you've got on your mind in a non-adversarial, loving way than to take a lot of guff. Does that ever get me in trouble? All the time! All the time! Especially when you do it with your boss, or your boss's boss, or your boss's boss's boss. Okay. However, if you do it in the proper way, people will respect you for it. Oh, you might get your butt kicked, but hey, that's life. Also, being a good example. Try to be the best example you can be, because I always say sometimes to people, excuse me, I can't hear what you're saying because what you're doing is speaking so loudly. Jesus said it a different way, by their fruit, she shall know them. And also we could cultivate love by ceasing to be possessive or jealous, not demanding from people more than they can give, not sitting in judgment. Thank God I had a terrible life before it helped me not being in judge because I don't run across too many people. That did the things that, that don't do the things I did, so I'm alone. It's a reminder. Uh, get away from the self condemnation and watch out for bargaining. I'll love you if. After all I've done for you, how could you do this to me? Okay. Does anybody ever use any of those? No, you don't have to put your hands on uh, I know. But the biggest thing about uh, this guy called love is working with removing fear. Okay. Easy to say, but that's something that we got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when someone we care about is not doing well and we want to support them, and we're afraid what might happen to them. So what are we contributing to their uh, outcomes? Nothing positive. And a lot of times people think, especially with mothers, if they don't worry, they're not a good mother or something. <laughs> Wrong! That's the worst thing you can do. We want to put the positive energy in there and deal with our fear 
and deal with that that energy we're putting out. No, know that it's valid. Okay, don't deny it. You don't want to live on the river in Egypt. Denial. <laughs> We've all been there. Okay, we gotta just accept it, embrace it, and let it be there, and move it outside of us. I will close with a quote by one of the great people of our times, Alexander the Great. And he said something that is really, really powerful with respect to revealing love, only he doesn't call it that, but it is. He says, through every generation of the human race, there has been a constant war, a war with fear. Those who have the courage to conquer it are made free. And those who are conquered by it are made to suffer until they have the courage to defeat it or till death takes them. So I know for you, as I know for myself, that we understand that who and what we are, the way we are today, is okay. And that any distortions that do not support this idea that are within me are now released into the false nothingness from which they come. And I accept that God in me, as me, by means of me, expresses through me each and every day in a more and more loving way. So I know it for each one of us. I know it for myself. I give thanks that it is so, and so it is.